again, for people listening for the first time, please like, subscribe, share this interview with your family and friends, and especially uh, the woman in your life, uh, because this may help them out if they're of age. Uh, with that said, we have Dr. Alan Lindemann here on Fire Breathing Rob. It is Pregnancy Your Way. That's the new book out, pregnancyyourway.com, uh, to check out more information about that book. Doc, thanks so much for coming back on. Greatly appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me on again, Rob. I appreciate it. What made you want to write this book besides obviously dealing with these practices throughout your whole life? Well, it's been fun. And uh, of course, everybody wants to have a legacy. So we've got a legacy. But what I want to really do here is to get to bridge the gap. In other words, our maternal mortality rates are increasing, not decreasing. And we have a long way to go, I think, to try to straighten that out. So the book we want to, the first thing we want to do is something positive, which is to promote pregnancy related uh, mental and physical health and wellness. And that is for moms, dads, and children. So dads are left out of most prenatal books, uh, except maybe a little bit of uh, uh, incidental, but we really are hitting the whole family with this book. The second thing I want to do with this book is try to avoid maternal injury or mor morbidity is the medical term. So we want to try to keep mom's blood pressures under control. We want to try to prevent um, eclampsia. You know, you probably heard of Tori Bowie, you know, who, you know, Tori, you're, you do a lot of, um, a lot of uh, sports on your show. And the third thing I want to do, of course, is prevent death. So naturally, that's not something we want to talk about, but uh, that is one of the, you know, when we, before we started the book, I realized there was a difference between what I wanted to say and what I needed to say or what the public wanted to hear. So we were always trying to figure out, to stay on the side of what the, our public wants to hear but at the same time to drive home the message that I wanted to give. I want to get into this a little bit deeper though, because, you know, especially within probably the past 10, 20 years, obviously you dealing with this, you would know the time frame a little bit better than I, uh, but it seems like the mortality, mortality rates rather for all the ethnicities in the United States are going up. At one point in time, I thought it was just black and Hispanic woman that was mainly high. But now it seems like everybody is high. Obviously, more ethnicities are higher than others. Well, you're absolutely right. If we look at the very best uh, results, and that's for young um, white women, we have a death rate of approximately uh, 23 per 100,000. Actually, it went up to 25 in the year of 2021. And that's our best. If you look at Native Americans, Native Alaskans, it's uh, about 45 per 100,000. And that's increased from about 25. And if you look at uh, women of color, we've got a death, a neonatal, or a, rather a maternal mortality rate of 69.9 per 100,000. And that's up from 45. So in from 2019, 2020, 2021, every year we've increased. So just going a little bit more deep into that, is this mainly an issue because it is hit, hitting all and ethnicities in general? Is this some sort of health care issue that doctors aren't seeing? Is it the woman or woman's fault in general maybe she's not keeping herself in the best shape uh drugs alcohol what what is the issue for all this you know it's what we see this mortality rate just going higher and higher every year well it certainly is complex and we have complex systems issues but mm -hmm. if you look at the biggest issue the number one cause of maternal death is called behavioral so that's suicide homicide and drug overdose. And, and, you know, years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, we didn't even have those things. And today we have them. And part of the problem is that we have a whole bunch of 
providers who don't feel any responsibility to work on that group. In other words, it's not my fault. That's what they're saying. It's not my fault. And I don't look at it from the point of view of fault, but I do look at it from the point of view of opportunity. In other mm -hmm. words, during the prenatal course, we have within our grasp, within our power, the opportunity to give something to our patients. And that is to help them get ready for their birth, ready for going home, ready for what's going to happen to them once they bring the new baby home, it cries every three hours, wants to eat every three hours. Uh, so the most important thing is, is practical. It's a division of labor. And that's what I'd like to teach my parents during the prenatal course so that when they go home, they're ready to go home. They know who's going to feed the baby when, what they're going to feed the baby, who's going to wash the dishes, who's going to fix the meals, who's going to clean the bathroom, all that stuff. Postpartum depression is different from other depressions. And it has a real practical aspect to it. So if you can agree, you know, mom and dad can agree on how to handle that, their life, their new life when they go home, they've got 90% of this postpartum depression stuff under mm -hmm. control. And again, for people listening, Alan Lindemann, again, it is pregnancyyourway.com. That's the book, the course. Uh, is you can find a lot of other information on that website in general. I want to go a little bit deeper into this, Doc. You know, as far as it goes, you know, you've discussed this, you know, quite often, but it seems like even in our last interview, you spoke about this, you had zero issues dealing with women with this issue. Why do you feel like you're getting it right and all these other doctors are not? <laughs> Well, let me say this. There are a lot of doctors who have good outcomes, so I'm not the only one. And we, you know, there's a lot of good outcomes, but um, there are things, I think there's two issues. One is access. Uh, and I think that's a really important problem for us. Um, and the first, the first leg or the first part of access has to do with insurance companies. That's really a lot different than it was 30 years ago or 20 years ago. For example, I think we might have talked about this already, but years ago, moms could stay in the hospital for three days. And that's if they had a normal vaginal birth. The other thing is every morning when we made rounds, we made sure that our patients are ready to go home. Could the baby eat? Could the baby latch on? Um, was mother comfortable? Was the milk in? Uh, was dad ready to go home? We could keep those people for as long as we needed to keep them to make sure they were ready to go home. Now, with the insurance company dictating health care, it's wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Everybody, everybody goes home, no matter whether they're ready to go home or not. That's a big problem. I think another problem is if you look at some of the prop, the uh, moms, you know, NPR has a lot of moms who die from labor or die during labor. And if you look at uh, I, our number one case is a NICU nurse, that is neonatal intensive care nurse, 32 years old, first baby, had high blood pressure, had the baby, stroked out and died. Wow. And if you look at, if you take that apart, if you look at each piece of that, there's a little bit of, of, of well, there's a lot of people not feeling responsible, but there's also systems problems. For example, uh, the nurses took off the monitor because they knew it was high. The doctor delivered the baby and then went home. When the nurses called, he didn't come back. What he did instead, was called the neurologist, who also didn't come in to see the mom. And the dad, who was an orthopedic surgeon, called one of his friends, who's an obstetrician. She didn't come in. So what you've got here is layers and layers of systems problems and layers of doctors who don't seem to feel responsible for the outcome of the patient. Now, I'm not saying that every doctor is like that, but I'm saying that in these situations, where you have these problems, you've got, I think, a lot of access issues and a lot of 
responsibility issues. So, you know, when I was doing this, it was fun. And I would never have gone home until that patient's blood pressure was under control. Yeah. So we're playing, putting the blame on a little bit of everything, the healthcare system in general, the insurance companies, and also uh, some doctors, obviously not all. Yeah. You're absolutely right. You know, one of the real problems we have with trying to get this stuff under control, the first thing is we've got people, doctors who are denying the problem. In other words, they say, oh, it's not my fault she committed suicide. It's not my fault she was shot at home. It's not my fault she decided to strangle her children. But yeah, maybe it isn't their fault, but still it's a missed opportunity to help people. So I think we need to look at, you know, let's kind of shed the guilt and let's shed the excuse making. And let's just look at it this from, yeah, I get to help this family this way and it's fun to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, Doc, I want to go more into the website again for people listening, pregnancyyourway.com. I'm just starting off with people that do want to speak to you and the community that you speak with. There is a membership tab there, and I do want to go down the list at some of the stuff you have on the website. But let's start off there. If you could explain to the listeners and viewers about the membership, obviously what they get out of it and you know who they can speak to. Well, of course, you can speak to me. That's I'm available all the time. But, you know, we made a, a video and, of course, nobody has seen it. One of the fun parts we did was we interviewed our quads. I delivered quads about 25 years ago. We went to see them about three years ago. They were all 22 years old, all living. But we have a 45-minute video that tells the mom there is, she's very, she works for a newspaper, so she's eloquent and explains exactly uh, how she felt about being pregnant with quads. This is a free video. So anybody who goes to the website can look at it and, and enjoy it for free. I just want to tell you a little bit about some of the problems of the quads, because I think it's important for people to understand when this is, of course, infertility. And when you get four babies, that's often considered a mistake. So she had been sent to three different doctors to um, what you call um, reduce the number of babies from four to two. So when she came to see me, I was the fourth doctor. And she said she didn't want to reduce it. I said, you, what you mean is you want to have four babies. You want to have... Get all these babies get the same chance to live. We're not going to discriminate against two of them. So anyway, she went into labor eventually about 28 weeks and 40 weeks of term. So she's a little early. She uh, we delivered the babies. They went home. Dad would, took care of them quite well. He said he delivered. He changed 7,000 diapers in the first month. So that's dedication. We also have on the website, this is another freebie, and it's another video, and it shows exactly how to do a cesarean section. So there's about seven layers. I go through every single one of them. Now, this is not a living person. These are drawings, but they're, they do explain very well how to do that. Also, on the, on the video, we talk about how to reduce the cesarean section rate. Uh, we talk about um, VBACs, that is uh, how to do a VBAC. I've done, that's a vaginal birth after C-section. I've done hundreds of them. And we talk about the limits. You know, years ago, we said you could do one VBAC. Well, I, a nurse came to see me, as a matter of fact, a nurse practitioner. She had four C-sections and asked me if she could have a fifth or, you know, get, have a vaginal birth. So I said, okay, we'll try it. And she did. She did fine. So, wow. Yeah, no uterine rupture. So, you know, the sky's the limit. Um, we've had, I've had a very good 
But are a lot of uh, doctors not, you know, they're they're very, I should say, I'll put it in these words, are nervous to do some of these medical treatments on women. Uh, you know, you just spoke about the C-sections because they're worried about malpractice. So why is it like, you know, a lot of doctors wouldn't take the chance as you did, doc? Well, there's, you have to understand that doctors pretty much are like sheep. They do what they're told to do. I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, the judgment, <laughs> where did that go? You know, yeah. we so saw anyway, that in the past three years, but but we won't get into that. <laughs> yeah, but go yeah, ahead. I was ask you about it. We'll do that later. <laughs> um, yes. Anyway, we talked, we, um, I've always tried to do what I thought was the best thing for the patient. You know, um, yes, you can be a slave to protocols. As a matter of fact, um, you know, we've seen that with the recently in the last three years yeah. about slaves to protocols. There's also punishment for thinking. Uh, in other words, <laughs> um, <laughs> I had to think about doing these VBACs. And there's a whole lot of doctors who say, oh, well, we can't do a VBAC because we got this, this, we got. But, you know, when I started doing them, all we had to do was get anesthesia there in a half an hour. We couldn't do any inductions, but we could. And then, of course, they were supposed to have had one baby, one vaginal birth first. So I ignored that part of it. And I also ignored the, um, the um, induction part. But never had any trouble. Never even had to do any blood transfusion. So uh, the other thing about a VBAC is it's a lot of work. It requires a lot of discussion with the patient. It dis it requires a good relationship with the patient, which the doctor is responsible for making. So, you know, but if you look at a C-section, if you compare the two, the C-section takes about 20 minutes to do. At least that's what it takes me to do a C-section. And the um, cost or the payment for a C-section is twice what you'd get for a vaginal birth. So you've got the C-section is faster. It's a lot easier to do and a lot more money. So there's a lot of reasons or a lot of incentives to do a C-section and to not do a vaginal birth after a C-section. Well, thank you for explaining that, Doc, because, you know, I, I've had a lot of these questions and I think that a lot of other people have had these questions and they need to be sorted out because these are some big problems and we need to hear about these. Uh, whoever's listening in general, I'm sure, has some thoughts on these issues that we're speaking about. I want to move a little bit on to... Uh, some of the causes, I know you just discussed that a little earlier on some of the causes that you have as far as free videos on that website. Again, PregnancyYourWay.com and also the podcast so in the interview with that. So you do have a little bit more of those, on those causes and the podcast. If you could describe to the viewers a little bit more in depth on that. Yes, thank you, Rob. Well, we've done about 120 podcasts and we try to keep them short. And hopefully we try, we can keep them uh, public, keep the public interested in what we have to say. Um, but, you know, I just did one on compounding pharmacies. Uh, and those are pharmacies that make, they'll make a medication for you. For example, if you're on a pill that you like, but the company stops making it, you can go to your compounding pharmacy. And yes, we've talked about VBACs, we've talked about um, different kinds of bacteria. You know, there's one that you can get from water and it's it's deadly. There's about, oh, I'd say maybe not even quite five patients a year get it, but they die from it. And uh, almost, mm -hmm. it's like a 99%. Uh, so you can get it in, in um, lakes. You can get it in um, little pools. You can get it, you know, how... Kids uh, like to slide down this plastic thing with water on it. You can get it that way. And you can get it even in drinking water. So you do have to be careful with it. Uh, I forget the name of it right offhand, but 
anyway, we can go to that. Um, I can find that later on and, and send it to you. Uh, so, yeah, we try to get, you know, um, we talk about preeclampsia. That's a really big deal. Uh, and again, you know, I brought up Tori Bowie, but she died. Uh, the thing about preeclampsia, and, and everybody listening to this should, should know this, it is a pregnancy-specific disease. You will never have preeclampsia if you're not pregnant. And the other thing to remember is that it doesn't matter how healthy you are. You know, Tori Bowie was the fastest woman on earth. And obviously in very good health. But when she died, she was 36 weeks along, eight months. She died at home by herself. And the baby weighed 1.8 pounds. Now, at 36 weeks, that baby should weigh five or six pounds. So at a baby that weighs 1.8 pounds is about 26 weeks along. So the whole point here, and this is what your audience should understand and remember, is that there were 10 weeks where this death could, these deaths could have been prevented. That's the take home message, preventing preeclampsia and preventing death. Yeah. And you did a great job with that. I wish more doctors would have, you know, I know there's some good ones out there. We're not going to try to uh, put everybody in one box, but uh, for the most part, a lot of doctors, as we've seen in the past three years, are, you know, are very sheepish, as you stated, doc. And, I uh, don't try to uh, put their critical thinking caps on. They just follow uh, the insurance book, we'll say. Um, but, you know, I want to end with this. Uh, you know, we've talked about quite a few things today in our conversation. Again, pregnancyyourway.com. Uh, can you tell the audience what you hope they learn from our conversation today, Doc? Well, I, there's a couple things. In the first place, my advice would be to find a doctor or a midwife or a nurse practitioner who will listen to you. That's the first thing, you know, and you can get, the other thing is you can shop. If you find a doctor, you know, if you're, say for example, your insurance says, oh, you have to go to this doctor and you can't go any other place. Well, yeah, you can, it might be a little complicated, but you can find somebody who will listen to you. Uh, that's probably the best piece of advice I can give uh, somebody also, you know, that you feel comfortable talking with. So listening is, is the take home message. Yeah. I think people need to shop around. You know, a lot of these guys don't really help you out too much. They kind of, again, just go and follow the book. So I do hope that people, and I've had those issues too. Uh, and I do hope people definitely uh, do shop around. Uh, you know, we talked about PregnancyYourWay.com and all the information you have there, the podcast, the, the classes, all that stuff is all in that, along with many other things such as forms, et cetera. Uh, what other website, Doc, can they go on to find more information about you, get the book, whatever it may be? Well, thank you, Rob. Uh, to find our book, it's Pregnancy Your Way Lindemann, and that's at Amazon. And if you don't put Lindemann after it, you'll get probably 40 other <laughs> choices. So Pregnancy Your Way Lindemann at Amazon. That's the best way to find our book. Uh, we, and we wanted to have the second, you know, the subtitle, Choose a Safe and Happy Birth, because that's the message that we want to give you can 95% of moms and dads can choose their pregnancy outcome. Yeah, I agree with that too, Doc. Again, pregnancy your way. Definitely check out the book on the Amazon, wherever books are sold. I'm sure if you go into most bookstores, they can look it up, order it, and you can get it that way too. Obviously, Amazon definitely does have it. Uh, Dr. Alan Lindemann, thanks so much for always coming on the program. I look forward to having you on again. 
uh, because you do bring in a lot of knowledge, not just on this topic, but also many other topics in general. So, Doc, thanks so much. We look forward to having you on again uh, within the weeks ahead. Thank you so much, Rob. I really appreciate it. And I'm hoping that uh, your audience has learned something today. And, you know, when we come back, if you entertain questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Yeah, well, we hope that, uh, and I'll end with this, we hope that people listening to this conversation, whether it's on the radio or the podcast, uh, they can email me or uh, shout out a question in general. Like I said, next time we have you on within those few weeks, uh, then we can uh, hopefully have you answer those questions. And that will be the objective of that. But again, Dr. Alan Lindemann of PregnancyYourWay.com. The book is Pregnancy Your Way and Lindemann. Just type all that in on Amazon. You'll get the book to come up right away. Uh, Doc, thanks again. Thanks a lot, Rob. I appreciate it.